studies suggest that the moon may have a similar tail, but it's only visible once a month when Earth passes directly through it. See parts of the moon that we have never seen before. Check this out. On November the 20th, 1969, while ascending back to the command module, Commander Charles Conrad Jr. and Lunar Module Pilot Alan Bean let go of the Apollo 12 launch vehicle, causing it to crash back to the moon. Immediately upon impact, an extremely unexpected event took place. It was reported that the moon had a seismic ringing effect similar to that of a bell for more than an hour. But what exactly did NASA hope to accomplish with this experiment? And why did it even conduct it in the first place? To find out, make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end because you don't want to miss out on this one. Researchers from NASA wanted to gain a better understanding of the Moon's makeup and how it was formed. During the Apollo 12 mission, astronauts installed a passive seismic experiment, PSE, at the landing site as part of the broader Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package, ALSEP. Once the Apollo 12 astronauts were safely back in the command module, they smashed the lunar module into the moon's surface. The impact was the equivalent of detonating one tonne of TNT and triggered what's known as a moonquake, the first human-made moonquake to take place. The PSE seismometers recorded the resultant vibrations, which were far stronger and lasted much longer than the experts had predicted. They were nothing like the earthquake tremors we're used to, NASA resumed its moonquake studies with identical results on the Apollo 13, 14, 15 and 16 missions. The findings were shocking at the time since they pointed to the moon being much less dense than Earth, which it is. The moon is just 60% as dense as Earth. Does this however imply that the moon is hollow? According to Walter Cunningham, who was the third civilian astronaut and was a lunar module pilot on the Apollo 7 mission in 1968, with Apollo 12, people refer to it as a crash. It wasn't really a crash. It was an aimed deorbit of the rocket used to lift off the lunar module, and the crew separated the launch vehicle and crashed it back into the ground, right close to where they had a seismograph that they had installed down there. Well, it vibrated, so it was an early clue as to how solid was the surface of the moon. What was interesting about this was that the moon suddenly began to ring like a bell and continued to do so for over an hour. Dr. Werner von Braun, then director of NASA, decided that for Apollo 13, they would purposefully crash a larger part of the rocket into the lunar surface. When they performed this, the moon rang like a gong for more than three hours and to a depth of more than 20 miles. This was unexpected and it continues to perplex many scientists today. Because the moon is mostly formed of the surface of a rock called basalt, the assumption is that it must be hollow. Although it is a lightweight rock, it absorbs a lot of impact. Because of this, you wouldn't expect the moon to reverberate after a significant hit if the entire surface was formed of the same type of rock. The reason for this is that the idea of the moon being hollow contradicts everything we know about physics. But what causes the moon to ring like a bell? Here's where things get lost in translation. The moon was ringing like a bell, Clive R. Neal, Professor of Civil Engineering and Geological Sciences at the University of Notre Dame says, says of the experiment results in a NASA write-up. And that's true from a scientific standpoint. Similarly, the write-up compares moonquake vibrations to those of a tuning fork, which is a type of acoustic resonator. It just keeps going and going, Neal says. Earthquakes on Earth normally only cause vibrations for about 30 seconds and never for more than two minutes. This is largely owing to the abundance of water on the planet. As Neil explains, water weakens stone, expanding the structure of different minerals. When energy propagates across such a compressible structure, it acts like a foam sponge, it deadens the vibrations. Meanwhile, all of the NASA-induced moonquakes lasted more than 10 minutes. The shockwave from the Apollo 12 moonquake took over 8 minutes to peak after impact and nearly an hour to completely subside. However, we now have a very good scientific explanation for it. There isn't much water on the moon that we know of, most of it is ice, and the moon is much drier and more rigid than Earth. As a result, the composition of the moon causes vibrations to ring and persist for a considerably longer period of time. In his 1966 book Intelligent Life in the Universe, renowned scientist and astronomer Carl Sagan characterized modern research regarding the composition of celestial bodies throughout the cosmos. Carl Sagan proposed that a natural satellite cannot be hollow. 
This is strange, because unless the moon is hollow, it shouldn't be vibrating. That would imply that it is something that is artificial. Some scientists believe that major areas of the moon have been hollowed out. If that's the case, chances are it wasn't accomplished naturally. It had to be done artificially. This raises a crucial question. Who would have had the ability, skills and technology to do so? Not us, for sure. That could only be done by extraterrestrials and no one else. There is evidence in ancient literature and legends of a time when no moon could be seen in the night skies. In describing the history of the Greek region of Arcadia, Aristotle writes that the Pelasgians lived in the area since very old times, at a time when the moon did not exist. Evidence has also been found in other parts of the world. In Bolivia, glyphs on the wall of the courtyard of Calasasea, built in 13,000 BC, provide evidence that the moon came into orbit around the Earth at a specific moment in time thousands of years ago, long before what mainstream historians refer to as recorded history. Furthermore, the calendar gate in the same location indicates that a smaller satellite once rotated around the Earth. What does it all mean? The ancient memory of a human-inhabited Earth without a moon has been passed down through centuries, establishing the traditions of different civilizations. How did the moon get there? Is it a part of the Earth? A planet that entered the magnetic field of the Earth? Was it constructed by a long-vanished civilization, or did it form naturally? Perhaps this is all the work of aliens after all. A new map of the moon, however, has shown a treasure trove of locations rich in precious titanium metal, with some lunar rocks containing 10 times as much as rocks on Earth. The map, which included visible and ultraviolet wavelength observations, revealed the valuable titanium deposits. These discoveries may shed light on some of the mysteries of the lunar interior, as well as provide the framework for future lunar mining. The map of the Moon's surface was constructed using data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter (LRO), which has been orbiting the Moon since June 2009. The wide-angle camera aboard the probe took pictures of the surface at seven distinct wavelengths and resolutions. LRO's instruments were able to provide scientists with a clearer image of the chemical makeup of the Moon's surface because specific minerals strongly reflect or absorb distinct regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The researchers surveyed the lunar surface and compared brightness in wavelengths ranging from ultraviolet to visible light, identifying places rich in titanium. The scientists then compared their findings to lunar samples returned to Earth by NASA's Apollo missions and Russia's lunar missions. The researchers were perplexed by these titanium-rich regions on the Moon. According to the scientists, the highest amount of titanium in similar rocks on Earth is roughly 1% or less. According to the new map, these titanium troves on the Moon range from roughly 1% to slightly more than 10%. Titanium is found largely on the Moon in the mineral ilmenite, a combination composed of iron, titanium and oxygen. If humans ever mine on the Moon, they could be able to break down ilmenite and extract these elements. Furthermore, Apollo data showed that titanium-rich materials are more effective at holding solar wind particles like helium and hydrogen. These gases are likely to be critical resources in the development of lunar colonies and lunar exploration. So all of this begs the question of why we haven't heard about these discoveries, or at least the relevance of some of them. If the hollow nature, rare metals and ancient legends about a time before the Moon were accurate, it would transform our concept of reality. But if all of them were true, you'd have to be really stubborn to believe it's just a coincidence that occurred to happen naturally. And since the Apollo flights, many people feel that NASA knows something about the Moon that they aren't willing to share with the public. Evidence for this conclusion can be found in the Brooking Report. The report is notable for one brief part titled The Implications of a Discovery of Extraterrestrial Life, which addresses the probable repercussions of such a discovery on public attitudes and values. The section briefly discusses potential public reactions to various possibilities for the finding of extraterrestrial life, emphasizing the importance of additional research in this field. It recommended further research to determine the likely social impact of such a discovery and its effect on public attitudes, including research into how leaders should handle such a discovery's information and under what circumstances leaders might or might not find it advisable to withhold such information from the public. 
Given the Brookings report, if NASA did find something on the moon, it could explain the body language and attitude of the Apollo 11 astronauts in a press conference after they return to Earth, in which they appear clearly anxious, frazzled and on edge, as if they had seen or heard something terrifying but are unable to discuss it. What are your thoughts on this? Is the moon really hollow? Tell us in the comments down below.